Welcome to PL Podcast with Greater Sudbury's Poet Laureate Vera Constantino. Hi, it's Vera. Welcome to Episode 5 of the PL Pod. Believe it or not, I had a game plan when my day started and just like that, it went up in metaphoric smoke. We've all had those days, haven't we? You have a list of things you want to accomplish and then something comes along like a conversation with a friend that's so great it runs along or 10 scam telemarketers who all want to cart you off to jail because there's something wrong with your SIN number or your warranty is running out or a bank. A bank has had some unusual activity and you don't even have an account at that bank. And so, yes, I know I'm preaching to the choir when I say we've all had those days. This poem, Days to Come, is a narrative of a different day. Days to Come. The sky has turned the bleak gray of old living room paint. Remember, we found it oppressive. Our lawn chairs here are positioned for the optimum view, as if they were in the old place. How we love to watch the world pass, watch birds fly to their nests. The old place, blue sky, bleak world, birds, but that gray living room paint when you were with me, that was a sign I missed of days to come. Now, wasn't that depressing? (laughs) I blame it on the rain. I'm back on track now, though, and one of the things I'd like to talk about today is the huge number of learning opportunities out there with Zoom, YouTube, Messenger, Facebook, and ad infinitum. If I name any more, I'm going to get a complex because these are platforms that I've used for workshops in poetry and fiction. The idea behind my signing up for as many workshops as I can take in right now is is that for once we're all in the same boat. None of us can physically attend the workshops of our choice. There have been a number of two-day workshops in the past that I would have given my large left fingernail to attend, but I couldn't. I don't travel well because of my physical limitations, and at times the venue would be unsuitable or, you know, because I use a scooter or a wheelchair. And even if the venue was perfect, I could likely pull off an afternoon and evening event, but the universe would have to really twirl in my favor if it was a two-day event that went from morning till night, or even afternoon into evening each day. I know I'm not alone in my limitations, and even with an assistant to smooth my path, the long day would be physically and mentally wearing. That's where all the Zoom pleasure comes in. Normally, there's a time limit on Zoom meetings. The longest one I currently attend is a high-bun workshop, two hours in length, and scheduled for five Monday evenings. It's hosted by Mike Montroy, a longtime member of Haiku Canada. He's also a publisher, and so far it's been a great learning experience. Overall, there are only a few negatives to the online meetings. First, and in my limited experience, there's always the chance that the moderator will be too polite to mute that one person who thinks... The other attendees need to know their entire life history. Don't be a Timmy talker when you attend a workshop. And second, it's not that easy to hold a comfy chat on an individual basis. There is a message section on Zoom that will let you private chat with someone, but then you're going to miss what's going on on the screen. (laughs) Online meetings are relatively simple to be a part of. Simply sign up, and when the coordinator sends you a link, click on it. Follow the instructions to turn on your audio and video, and ta-da, you're usually in. Even with the few downsides and the amount of new information, I, I wish I could do everything. There's just so much. This month I attended a Fold workshop specifically called Podcasting and Film for Change. And since this is my fifth podcast, I thought it would be a good idea to see what it is I'm supposed to be doing as a podcaster. <laughs> I learned that I ought to excite people. So people, are you excited yet? It was also suggested that my podcast be a lesson for learners. At number five, I don't know if I've offered that yet either. Once when I was working 
at a weekly paper, I was approached by a reader who said, I've been reading your column for a while and it occurs to me that I could do what you do. Well, yeah, you can. And I'm happy to help you. <laughs> With regard to the columns, I started writing them out as if I were speaking to someone. Like a storyteller, kind of like a podcast. If you're a storyteller, and if people have said to you, you're funny or clever, you too can pull off slice of life columns or stories. That's what chicken soup for the soul books are all about. It's much the same with poetry. I'm sure I heard a groan somewhere on the wind, but bear with me. I've written poems for family members and for birthdays and for friends when a baby's born or anniversaries and once for a wedding. And since the anniversary of the wedding is now here, I'm going to take the chance to read this poem publicly. It's called One Perfect Love. Even one perfect love, even that is as fragile as butterfly wings. But it's yours if you take care to care. In this, your moment of perfect, fragile love, remember, you are the embodiment of past lives and loves. The bitter, the bittersweet has brought you here. Your future can be all you dream, one dream to tend. Care for the seeds you sow on this day, and you too will begin to grow a garden that will yield the pleasures of one perfect, fragile love. Happy anniversary, you two, if you listen, which I <laughs> hope you do. The one thing to remember is to write with truth and sincerity. If you are simply passing along your heartfelt wishes, what's to stop you from being sincere? And no one else is going to read it. And if you would say these things to the people that you're talking to, it should be easy. As I said from the start, at episode one, I am new to podcasting, but if you have a smartphone and an idea, why not give it a shot? I found the recording of the podcast both fun and frustrating. Several things have contributed to both those feelings. <clears throat> I don't have a, a reason for what I do. I just like to do it. And <laughs> sometimes in the middle of doing what I like to do, the phone will ring or or someone will walk into my office and, you know, it's a distraction and a disruption and you can't. And because I don't know how to edit, I'm really, I have to start again from the beginning. One of these days, I'm going to learn how to edit. But, you know, people who walk into your office and people who phone you, not a bad thing. It's the same thing that happened when I got delayed today. I've mentioned in the past that I'm not just a poet. I also write <clears throat> flash fiction and creative nonfiction and other things. Well, I, I am pleased that I have a story published right now on rejectionletters.com. It's, it's one of my weird ones. They had a weird call. I put that out there and they took it. So if you decide to read it on their website, thank you. Rejection letters. Dot com. My thanks to Lori Gannett for the great cover photo. I, I had to find someone to do a yoga pose. Further to the idea of branching out, I poetry bombed someone at Bell Park after witnessing the sweetest act of friendship. It was so fun to leave a poem for someone that I decided to take it public. So if you see a plain white sheet of paper with a logo and the hashtag poetry bomb, no, these little poetry moments are from me. I'd like to read you another poem now. This one is called Hatchlings. Sometimes I hatch a promising thought, yet in spite of my best efforts, it remains incomplete. Still, it belongs to me, so I scribble it down on a piece of paper and I put it in a box I keep on my desk. I wonder at times where the completion waits. Occasionally, in search for inspiration, I lift each thought I've hatched, each bit of paper from the box, and read it, then lay it aside. Once I have reached the bottom of the box, the end of thoughts, I repack my hatchlings in their place. I question at times if the reason I have saved these bits of thought on paper is as an insurance against the day when the Alzheimer's disease that captured my sisters and my niece comes looking for me.
Will I know then to open the box and collect my thoughts? That's the end of the podcast for this month. Thank you for stopping by. This is Vera saying goodbye. Write something. It feels good.